Before my years with metrics, I spent nearly 10 years working with preps, specking features, taking tech support calls, and training hundreds of users. I'm going to focus this short presentation of four areas and metrics that I think will be compelling to preps users and perhaps motivate them to consider whether metrics will bring them further and with greater ease. I'm going to focus this presentation on four areas. Auto planning based on real economics, standard layouts, not the templates that you're used to with preps, super easy file and run list management, and what I call smarter marks. So let's jump in and let's take a look first of all at auto plan or what I call economics that are real. And the thing to understand behind all that I'm about to show you is that in metrics, when we think of the devices we're working with, whether it's a press like the Speedmaster 102, we're not thinking just of specifications of what the press is capable of doing. We're thinking of how the press runs, how it works, that it costs us $500 an hour to run at a certain speed, that we have a certain um, make-ready hours per ink color, plate costs, cutting costs, drying time. We want to understand what the eco economics are that drive that press. And in combination with that, very importantly, when we use certain stock, what that stock costs us to use because that balance of manufacturing between stock consumption and plate and make ready and press costs, well, that helps us make some very intelligent decisions. As an example, I'm going to import a project. This is a very simple Excel spreadsheet. And from this Excel spreadsheet, I've quickly imported a list of products to work with. They're all eight and a half by 11. They've got different quantities from 26,000 down to 350. Somehow, I need to decide how many layouts to make. Should all these fit on one large layout uh, with tons of overs? Should I have it on six different layouts that keep the overs very minimal, but there'd be a lot of plate and make ready costs? That's what auto plan and metrics is all about. It uses the economics of what I showed you in its database to figure out, in this case on a 2436 sheet, what we should do to our best economic advantage. And in this case, Metrics concludes that we should make two layouts, one that we will run 5,200 of, and the second one we'll run 825 of. It's balanced the number of overs against the cost of plates, make ready, and of course the stock consumption. Another very different example would be something like this very simple booklet. We need to produce an 8.5 by 11 booklet. It's 44 pages. 3,000 is the quantity. Now it's got two 16s that will be printed and obviously they'll run as independent separate layouts. But we've also got an 8 and a 4. Now you could argue we should have used a 12, that's a different question. But if we're running this as an 8 and a 4, in this case here we'd have to think, well should the 8 and the 4 run together on a layout? That'll save us on plates and make ready, but we'll have a bunch of stock that's not used well. Or inversely, we should perhaps run these on two separate layouts, have no overs, no wasted stock, but it's another set of plates and make ready. An experienced estimator or planner, they'll know what to do when the quantities are perhaps quite low or quite large. But here we have 3,000 for the quantity. It's kind of in the middle. What should we do? If we run that through auto plan, again, economically, metrics answers the question and says we should run those two 16s as separate layouts. Yes, of course, but the 8 and the 4 should run together, and we might even have ultimately different ways that we could run them, and run them this way, but that wasted stock at the top, if you want to call it waste, is the smartest thing for us to do right now. If the quantity were different, we'd get a totally different result. So that's our view of economics, and I think it's very unique, very powerful. Customers who migrate from preps to metrics end up coming back commonly and telling us this is one of their favorite things about metrics. The next one is standards, and I think you've seen it already. A layout like this one has been um, created, if you will, on the fly, but it's uh, very rich in its layout. We see marks already here. We see dimensions. It's very detailed. How is that the case? Well, if we look at a project like this one here, where I'm simply trying to produce an 8.5 by 11 item, for example, on a sheet size 2538, I could ask metrics, and perhaps could do this too, to create some kind of a layout. And of course, I might have different options for how to lay that out. 
But even if I chose one of these options, I would have to add marks to it and perhaps dimensions and maybe rotate pages based on what we would normally do. Now, of course, in preps, you're used to finding a template, looking amongst hundreds, sometimes thousands of templates, trying to pick the right one looking at the names and hopefully operators have created very rich and helpful names so you pick the right one but you know that there's duplicates in that list you know that there's some tiny variations that were made for a good reason one day but you just hope you don't accidentally pick them one day you're looking for frankly the standard one you would normally use most of the time in metrics it works like this we just ask metrics to search the database by clicking the standards button and when I do that, it will look for any standard layout that has been created with 8.5 by 11 pages that are running sheet-wise on the Speedmaster 102 that are running on a 2538 sheet. If there is a standard, it will retrieve it. If there isn't, it won't. It's black or white, and it says, yep, I found it. You will never look through a list of names and choose one because there can only be one standard layout that matches this exact set of conditions. I can certainly create one-off instances with odd little things going on. I can create as many as I want. But when it comes to the standards, it's black or white. It finds the standard or it doesn't. And that gives you confidence that you've got the right standard, not one possible correct variation. One additional thing to say is that in the user's database, when someone logs in, it tells metrics whether they have the privilege to make, edit, or delete standards. Not everyone will have that ability based on the specifications you set up. Next thing we're going to take a look at is what I call the super easy file list and run list. Let's open a project that will help illustrate this well. This is a very simple project. It's a bound product, an 8 and a 16, 24 page booklet. And here we have a run list. Now this is something new in metrics. If you've looked at metrics in the past and perhaps didn't consider metrics because our lack of a run list, then you're going to love this. So I've got three different PDF files that need to be assigned to this project. A couple different ways I can do it. I can drag them from the operating system right in and it assigns them that way. There's still some unassigned ones. So let's go grab the other two. I could drag them straight in, but in this case, just to show a difference, I can drag them into the file list, and from within here, I can drag down to assign. Maybe I'm trying to accomplish something a little different. Maybe I'd like to select only certain pages and assign those, or of course, the whole thing. Pages can be reassigned, unassigned, blank pages inserted. If you're in a JDF workflow, we'll show you if there's a color mismatch between what you'd planned to have in the project and the ink colors that we're reading in the PDF file. It's a very rich way to work. Let me show another example, which is quite different, but I think very powerful. Let me import another CSV or comma separated file. In this case, it's a list of business cards customers given this to me or perhaps I've created it different cards different names different quantities here's my run list of course there's nothing in it I could assign them one by one by dragging PDFs in that's a lot of work so let's select all the products what I'd like to work with though is something a little different I have the front of these cards which is common I can right click and see yep that's the PDF file I'm after so I'd like to select all the front and just drag this down into there and I've assigned all the fronts from one PDF. Then I show all the backs which of course are meant to be separate and I grab this PDF that has 26 pages in it Oops. and I just drag it onto the first page and I've now assigned all those PDFs pages individually to those items and if I go back and preview them I can see front and back of every product front and back so it's an incredibly simple way there's a lot more I could show you but it's a very very simple and powerful way to work with content files the last thing I told you I'd mention was smarter marks let's go ahead and open up a layout I'll show you a simple one here just a single postcard. I'll ask metrics to figure out a layout for me. 
and I need to add marks to it. Now just like preps, you can assign individual marks, rectangles, lines, and text marks, and file marks, and so forth. And so you can in metrics. And you can also make smart marks, if you will, like you can in preps, where the marks have rules attached to them. And like you'd expect, you could add smart mark groups. We call them mark sets. But our mark sets are actually very smart. So not only do the individual marks themselves have a smartness to them, when I ask metrics to add a mark set, let me open this up a bit here. Metric says, well, first of all, you're only going to see the mark sets that know that they would work on the press that you're using right now and the working style you're working with. So I don't see any mark sets in here for my Komori press because I'm not using the Komori right now. Secondly, and perhaps as important, maybe more importantly, metrics will look and filter based on ink colors. So the products I'm working with back here in this project are only CMYK. So this mark set here, for example, that has black only marks in it, I don't want to use that. And all of these have some manner of spot color accommodation. I don't need that. So let's filter for ink colors. And out of 65 mark sets, I'm down to one, maybe sometimes two or three, but at least they're absolutely legitimate ones. And it weeds out all the ones that are not the ones you're looking for. You hit OK, and it uses that mark set. And like I said, the marks are smart in that if something changes, for example, the sheet size, nobody should be surprised by this. The marks behave by moving, stretching, changing, and again, just behaving in a way that is consistent with the rules that are internal to the marks. And of course, typically here, we'd ask for a new layout. We get a new layout. So those are features that I think are kind of top of the list for preps users that are looking at metrics and considering whether a change or a switch is helpful. Um, I said I had four areas. There's actually a fifth one, and that is metrics development. It is accelerating. We're reaching further. Metrics is available as a standalone solution for people uh, who don't have any other EFI products. And metrics is also available deeply integrated into several of our EFI productivity suites. So we hope that you'll give us a look. And if you have questions, let us know.